So in this video, you're going to see how to construct a side-side-side triangle, an SSS triangle. That's one where you're given the three side lengths but no angles, and you're going to construct it using GeoGebra tools, which will be very accurate. Um, when you open your GeoGebra geometry page, make sure you are on the geometry one, um, you'll get a blank screen like this. You won't get this diagram here. I've put this in here so you can see which triangle we're trying to draw. Um, and you'll get on the left-hand side some tools that you're going to use. If you don't see the tools, click on this icon here, the triangle and the circle. Um, that's the geometry tools one. And then when you get them, click on more because we're going to use a lot more of these tools. Very important when I uh, tell you which tool to use, that you use the exact one um, that is told in the video because if you use a different one, it will work in slightly different way. Right, to get started with this with pencil and ruler, we'd normally draw the base. So we draw a 7cm base. To do that in GeoGebra, we have to click on this tool here, segment with given. It's actually segment with given length. So I'll click on that and it says here segment with given length, select point, then enter the length. So we'll select the point here and the base is 7, so we'll enter a length of 7 and say OK. And there we get our base. Now yours might not be labelled C and D, your points might be labelled with other letters, but that's OK. Um, that's a nice size on my diagram, but if it's not for you, in the bottom right corner are some magnifying glasses. Um, you can zoom in or zoom out to change the size and get it looking just right. Right, the next thing we do constructing is we draw a 9cm radius circle centred on C. The tool we need to do that is under circles, and the tool you need is the one that says this one here, circle, centre and and the missing bit is radius. If we click on that, you'll see it says circle with center and radius. You must make sure you're using this one. We're going to click on where the center of our circle will be. And notice how the cursor changes. At the moment, this would just give us a point somewhere on the white space. As we get near C, the cursor changes. And that means we're going to select point C. Okay? It asks for the radius. The radius is 9 because that's the length of that side. We'll say OK doesn't matter that the circle's gone over our diagram at the moment. And then we'll do it again on D. You don't need to click on the tool again, um, but in case it hasn't, uh, it, it isn't working properly, just do reselect the tool, but it should automatically use the same tool. Click on D, and this time the radius is 8, because the side coming from the bottom right corner is 8. So we'll type in 8 and say OK. And there are our two circles. The next thing we need to do is to mark this intersection point. So, go back to our tools, and at the top is one that says point. Click on point, and then again, as we hover over, we will get the cursor changing, and we can click on our point, and there it is. Now, before we do any more, uh, I'm just going to select the move icon, and I'm just going to check that my diagram's correct. If I move point C, notice everything moves. All the, the construction stays exactly the same. If I move point D, it rotates, but it stays exactly the same structure, the circles and this point. And that means I've got that right. OK, we need to put these two sides in now. Now, it's not line that you use, it's segment. A line goes on forever in both directions. We want segment, which is a part of a line. So click on the segment tool and again, hover over G, uh, Sorry, point C. See on my diagram, it might be something different on yours. Make sure the cursor changes. Click on that first point, let the mouse button up, go up to the second point, get the cursor to change. You can see as the cursor changes, the line snaps to the point. Can you see that? And then click on E, and then do the same. Select from E, go down to D, it snaps to point D, and there we go. Okay, and there's our triangle. Now, we're going to erase all the construction lines now because uh, we want a nice looking triangle at the end. So the way to do that, go back to the left panel where the tools are, and this time click on the calculator and it says algebra. You don't need to worry about that. It's not actually algebra really. Um, we'll click on that. And now we want to erase the points C, D and E. Well, we don't want to delete them. We just don't want them to show. So point C, point D, and point E, there we go. If you click on those buttons, you'll notice that they've disappeared from the diagram. Uh, you won't have these two points at the beginning, don't worry about that. They were the points for my where I put this picture of the triangle we were going to draw. They're the points that hold that in place. So 
don't worry that you don't have those, you won't do. Okay, we want the circles to disappear. So we can see that C and D are the circles. C is the circle with centre C and radius 9, the circle with centre E and radius 8, so let's click on those, and they'll disappear. And now all we have is the three lines. We've got a neat triangle. Let's go back to the tools, because the last thing we need to do is to put some angles on the triangles. So we'll go down to Measure and choose Angle, and the angles will appear if you go to a corner and you click on the two lines coming from that corner of the triangle, so the two triangle sides. So to get this angle, I'm going to click there and there. And there we go, there's the angle. Okay, we'll go up to here, click there and there, and that angle appears. And then finally, and I'm just going to show you something if you make a mistake. I'm going to click here, and then I just missed that line, and it's put a point in place. If you do that, just undo. Don't go on anymore. Just go on and undo. On a PC, that's Control-Z. On a Mac, it's Command-Z. And that will just get rid of what you've done, and you can go back and redo it. Check the angle is still selected. Click on that line. Click on that line. And there's your um, third angle in place. Okay. Now, if we move, you need to make sure you go back to the tool, go back to the move tool, and you can just drag these angles so that they're a little bit clearer, so that you can see them. And then it would be nice to have the side lengths shown. A quick way to do that, go to select objects, okay, click and drag to select the whole triangle, and then you'll notice here three dots. Click on those and go to settings. And on basic on the settings, click on show label and a down arrow and say value. Okay, and you'll notice now it's showing nine, eight, and seven, which are the lengths of the sides. There are lots more tools to play around with here. There's lots of things you can look at here. You can change um, the colors of objects and styles, but please don't spend your time doing that until you've finished your triangles um, and you can improve the appearance. Um, we'll just click on the cross there to close that down. Um, we'll go back to move, and we can move these numbers so that they are in a slightly better position. Um, and then just click away so nothing's selected and highlighted. And there you have your perfectly constructed triangle with the angles measured on it.